Hello, it's Don Michelle from Boho Tarot, and today I thought I'd share with you my favorite new, or new to me, tarot decks of 2020. While I brought over 30 tarot decks into my collection, oh my goodness, in 2020, there were a handful of standout decks that quickly became treasured parts of my collection. Let's take a look at some of my favorite new decks from this year. So the first favorite deck that I want to share with you is a deck that I picked up in January, and that is the Animals Divine Tarot. Now, I do apologize because this deck is out of print, and it did take me a very long time to find a copy of it, but I was lucky to get one that was actually still still sealed, and I do have to say that it has become a treasured favorite in my collection. The thing that I really appreciate about this deck that we can see here is that the court cards and the majors are all gods and goddesses, and the minors are all animals. And I really love that combination of sort of the above and below, sort of that cosmic energy with that very grounded earthy energy. And I really love the way that that kind of coalesces and mingles in this deck. And to be perfectly honest, this was the deck that kind of got me into working more with animal decks. Um, this was kind of, I call it my gateway animal deck. So it's the one that actually got me excited about working with animal decks that kind of helped me to come around to the idea of animal decks and how I might be able to incorporate them into my practice. So this was a really great bridge deck for me because it had the gods and goddesses, which is a huge part of my practice in general. And then it added in that animal energy, which is something that I'd been quite resistant to up until um, really this year. And I think it was just one of those cases where we just really need to find the right deck, right? The, the deck that's really going to speak to us, that's going to make that connection. And now that I've kind of made that connection to animal energy, it's something that I'm a little bit more open to working with, I'm a little bit more receptive to, and something that I've been kind of pulling into my collection um, little bits here and there. This artwork is absolutely beautiful. I really hope that at some point Llewellyn re-releases this deck. Now, of course, Borderless would be amazing, but I do really like having the animal name and or the god or goddess name at the top and the tarot association down at the bottom. And I think that's actually really helpful in this deck. Um, whenever I do come across a god or a goddess or even an animal for that matter that I'm unfamiliar with their energy, unfamiliar with their story, I can dip into the guidebook and read more about that. And if it didn't have either one of those things, I think it would make it a little bit more difficult to do that. So while we always say borderless is like our preference, um, for this particular deck, I really feel like you kind of need both. And so I am happy that they are both represented here on the card. I would, however, like to see Llewellyn re-release this deck just so that it would be available to more people to purchase because it is out of print right now and very, very hard to get. But it has definitely become one of my favorites in my collection and it's one that I use quite often. So while it's a new deck to my collection as of January, it's also become a very treasured part of my collection as well. So that is the Animals Divine Tarot by Lisa Hunt. Sadly, it is out of print, but you can still on occasion find a copy on trade sites or on places like eBay. So in February, I brought in the Ember and Aura Tarot into my collection. And this is, I believe, the second edition, which is, it's the Awakening Edition. And I, I had seen this deck, right? When it first came out, I had seen it many, many times. And I was always kind of drawn to the artwork. I thought it was really neat. I love the color palette. And I always kind of had it in the back of my mind, oh, this would probably be a great self-care deck to which it actually is. Now this edition I have trimmed and I do have a mod with me on my channel on it because I've taken the gilding off and I've kind of made it a little bit smaller. Um, I believe it did have white borders because there were white borders on the back as well. And so I've trimmed it down and it's a little bit smaller now and I've taken that gilding off. The only part of this deck that really doesn't thrill me is the suns. They are all in these boxes, but I think that 
having the square element for the suns in each suit is actually quite wonderful. Um, I just compared to the full illustrated cards that we have, as we see here in the Empress, I just, I, I like these so much better, but there also is this great sense of these pip style cards in this deck, which we see here in the six of cups. And I really love that it kind of pulls both in. So of course, as you can see here in the Diviner of Swords, they all are very young and slim and beautiful. And at first that kind of threw me and I wasn't really thrilled with that, but I've kind of come to, to terms with that because of the way that I'm able to work with this deck and connect with the deck on such a wonderful level. Um, it is definitely a deck that I use for self-care. Oh, look at that Nine of Cups. I love that card. Um, it's definitely a, a deck that I use for self-care. It's definitely a deck that comes frequently into my practice, but I also use it for a lot of my moon readings. And because this deck actually has a slightly Christian undertone to it, it actually works really well with my um, Mary studies. And I wouldn't say that it's a Christian deck because it's certainly not. However, we do have some Christian iconography in this deck. Um, if I can find it, the Hierophant does bear a very striking resemblance to Jesus. But we can see here in the Sage of Coins that, you know, some of the cards also kind of have a little bit of a maybe a witchy vibe. And I think that's really cool too. But it's just one that, that quite frankly surprised me because while I was always like, yeah, I really like the artwork. It's really pretty. I like the color palette. It's very soft and pleasing. Um, I didn't really expect it to have quite the depth that it actually does have. And I think that that's really wonderful. And it's a deck that I enjoy using quite a bit. So that's another deck that came into my collection in February and has become another treasured favorite. That is the Ember and Aura Tarot. So the next deck to make its way into my collection in 2020 is the Dame Darcy Mermaid Tarot. And this one I actually brought into my collection in March, but didn't really dive into until we got to the summer months. And then I spent an entire month with this deck and we had like this most awesome connection. I love this deck. There is something about this deck. It's, it's fun. It's whimsical. Um, it always gave me really great readings. I love the color palette. That really is what thrills me about this deck. It has the most gorgeous kind of vintage col color palette. I really like the way that Dame Darcy um, illustrates. I think her illustrations are really vivacious. I think they are really fun. Um, I have also her Queen Alice deck, which I think is really wonderful but that didn't actually come into my collection in 2020. I got that um, the year previous, so I wanted to really focus in on decks that just came into my collection this year. I do really love this Queen of Pentacles. She is my card. I always look for her in a deck, and when I love the Queen of Pentacles, that's always a bonus. I think this Hermit is quite awesome. But this is a deck that just, like, we kind of totally had a little crush on each other over the summer, and... Um, it kept giving me the Two of Cups card like all the time. That was my stalker card in this deck. And um, Lisa would joke that, oh, your deck has a crush on you. But the feeling was totally mutual because I totally was crushing on this deck as well. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I really love working with it. And it just has such a wonderful energy to it. Um, it really does embody kind of that vintage beachy feel um, that I think it works really beautifully in the summer and so it was a deck that I was drawn to quite frequently during the summer which I think was actually really helpful because you know COVID so couldn't exactly like get to the beach and do our normal summer thing so it was at least it was it was great to at least be able to connect with that energy um, in this deck even though I couldn't actually connect with it in person. So that is definitely another favorite for 2020, and that is the Dame Darcy Mermaid Tarot. So the next couple of decks we're going to look at are really surprise decks, as in I was surprised that I connected with them the way that I did and that they have really become favorites for the year. This is the Efflorescent Tarot, and I have talked about this deck many times on my channel. Um, it is a deck that surprised me with its depth. Um, 
I really love the melancholy energy that is in this deck. And I thought that it was going to be a deck that I would use anytime I was feeling that way. But this deck really does tap into a variety of emotions. And I found that it was a really wonderful deck for connecting with how am I feeling. It has the capacity to tap into sort of that underlying feeling, that underlying emotion, um, kind of that what's rippling underneath the surface. And I find that this deck just works really beautifully for that. Um, I absolutely love the color palette. I love the imagery. I cannot stand the cardstock. I've talked about that um, multiple times. I have trimmed this deck down. I do have a mod with me on my channel if you want to check that out. Um, but the cardstock is plastic and super glossy, and I have a really hard time working with it, even trimmed. But that doesn't stop me from connecting with the deck. It doesn't stop me from working with the deck. And it's one that I pull out quite frequently for readings, especially for readings that have any sort of an emotional undercurrent. That's really, I think, where this um, deck shines and not always in the negative emotion either. It has a really wonderful capacity for picking up on sort of the sad sweetness the, of the moment. And it's just one that I really found that I was able to connect with on a very... Um, on a very deep emotional level. And so it's been a beautiful one to work with and one that I'm really excited to have in my collection and one that I really was um, quite surprised with how much I actually enjoyed working with it. And the depth of the deck itself actually surprised me because I kind of pigeonholed it into, it's a deck for when you're not feeling your best, right? It's a, it's a, it's a sad deck. Um, but I think to say that that's all that it's capable of is really limiting for this particular deck because I found that it really tapped into more than just those sort of sad melancholy emotions. It really taps into that underlying emotional current and does it beautifully. So a definite surprise for me, but has become a really important staple in my collection, especially for when I'm trying to navigate my own um, emotional current. This tends to be the deck that I have been using all throughout 2020, and that is the Efflorescent Tarot. So another surprise favorite is the Star Child Tarot, and this was the re-release that came out, um, I believe, in June, and I believe that's when I picked it up. Now, I had kind of gone back and forth about whether or not I was actually going to get the deck and clear up until I did the initial walkthrough of the deck. I was really kind of ho-hum about it. Um, I'm going to be perfectly honest. I wasn't really impressed. I love the Moonchild. That's one of my favorite decks. But this one just like out of the box did not impress me. So if you saw that walkthrough that I did at the end... I checked back in because I had done my first reading with this deck and it kind of blew me away. And sometimes it just takes actually working with a deck before you really get a chance to get to know it and before you can really say, I think for certain, whether it's a deck that's gonna work for you. So while I do have some issues with this deck and there are a few cards that are a little bit problematic for me, this deck really has kind of served its purpose well in my collection. I use it a lot for self-care readings. I also use it a lot for my moon work and it really works beautifully in both of those aspects. Um, it really is a wonderful reader and I think that it really took me being able to actually work with the deck to get to know it to really sink into its messages and its energy for me to really make that connection. Because like I said, out of the box, I wasn't impressed. Um, but as, as we worked together over the course of 2020, I really kind of developed a bond with this deck and a really wonderful connection that I feel is very similar to the connection I have to the moon child. Um, but this one I almost feel a little bit even closer to just because I had to work a little bit harder at it. Um, it was a deck that didn't really come that easily to me and, and we had to get to know each other. And this right here, it's always funny when these cards come up, but this right here is the card that I struggle the most with in this deck because this Hierophant to me looks dead and I really have a hard time with that every time she comes up in a reading, but I've learned to kind of just, you know, go with the flow with that. Um, overall, it's just, it's, you know, it's got its issues. It's full of the beautiful people and... 
that's really not my favorite. Everybody's super young and super beautiful, but it has some really amazing cards in it. Like this oppression card here is really wonderful. I love the geometric pippy nature of some of the cards like the sun. So it really has a lot going for it. It's a beautiful deck and one that really surprised me. But it was one that I actually had to work at. I had to work at getting to know this deck. I had to spend some time with it. Um, I had to really dive in and actually do readings with it. It wasn't an out-of-the-box connection like some decks are. This one took me some time and effort, but I'm so glad that I did because now we have a really wonderful connection. So I purchased this deck in the summer and I have really been working with it pretty consistently ever since. So it's definitely a newer favorite in my collection, but a favorite nonetheless, and that is the Star Child Tarot. So as the year went along, I kept seeing images of this deck. And this is the Kai Tarot Love. And I kept seeing images, these images, all over Instagram. And every time I saw one of the images, something in that image just really spoke to me. And I was really drawn to it. And I would go and I would look at it. And I would just go, uh, I really, I don't need it. I like it, but I don't need it. And... Finally, after a few months of every time seeing one of these images having that reaction, I thought, why am I fighting it? And I went ahead in August and purchased a copy. And I have to say that I'm so glad that I did because I absolutely love this deck. It is another one that is really gorgeous for um, self-care readings, but I find it also to be a very intuitive deck. And so I really love doing deeper readings with it to really sink into the artwork and the imagery, into the texture and the color. And that really provides um, a lot of wonderful nuggets to dig into, into a reading. So even just beyond, you know, the tarot associations, when you pull one of these cards in a reading, you can look at the card and go, here's the high priestess. And that has whatever meaning it has for you. But there's also so much going on in the play of color, in the texture, in all of the little additional elements that you can draw into your reading. And I think that that's just absolutely gorgeous. And I really enjoy being able to incorporate that into my readings with this deck. And it really makes for some deep readings, which is really wonderful. So we can see here this Four of Pentacles. You can see all the little elements are underneath this volcano that's erupting. And I think that's just wonderful imagery. I really enjoy it. And some of the artwork is a little bit abstract and a little bit on the um, odd side. But I think it's really beautiful and it provides a lot of um, space for you to flex your intuitive muscles. I love this Wheel of Fortune. So it's another one that kind of like the Star Child, I was seeing it all over the place and um, every time I saw it, I had a reaction to it. This one was a little bit more of a positive reaction, but I had a reaction nonetheless. And I'm so glad that I finally decided to um, to get it into my collection and to bring it in to, and to spend some time working with it because it has really um, been a wonderful, deep experience and I've really enjoyed the work I've done with this deck. So again, that is the Kai Tarot Love, and that is a deck that, while it's a newer deck in my collection, has definitely made its way onto my list of favorites for 2020. So the last tarot deck in my list of favorites is one that has been around forever, and that is the Morgan Greer. Now, this is a deck that I've seen, right, all over the place. We've all seen this deck um, because it's a staple. It's what I would consider a classic RWS deck. And it's one that just for whatever reason, I had just never gotten my hands on. It just had never come into my collection. So in the month of November, I actually worked with some of the decks that I would consider those classics and just hadn't ever gotten around to um, working with over my many, many years of working with the tarot. And this one definitely was kind of the favorite out of all of those. And it's really also kind of just my right now favorite. I'm not even 100% sure exactly what my connection is to this deck other than to me, this deck kind of feels like conversing with old friends. And it feels like conversing with old friends that I grew up with because this definitely has a look to it that is kind of reminiscent of my childhood. It kind of takes me back to that place. And so I feel as though these characters that are in this deck 
are characters that I have these conversations with, but you know, we have a history, which is funny because this deck has only been in my collection since October. It is relatively new or new to me, and we really haven't done that much work together, but already I feel like these are like old friends, and already I feel like these are represent energies that I grew up with, and so there's a definite personal connection there, and I guess a little bit of nostalgia as well. It's definitely a deck that has surprised me because there's a familiarity to this deck, and it's not just because you know, I've seen these images for years and and I'm familiar with the style and the artwork, but the familiarity is something that I think is, is a bit more personal. It's not just a familiarity because I know the imagery because I've seen it um, for decades. It's familiarity because it feels like these are characters or archetypes or energies that have kind of followed me into adulthood and they feel a little bit like like they've been there. They've been there. They've gone through the struggles with you. They have come out the other side with you. They know what you've gone through. They know, you know, your your struggles and your successes, and they're there to support you. And it's really quite interesting because it's a new deck for me. So to have that connection with a deck that I've only had in my collection for a couple of months is really fascinating. Um, it was a very quick connection a very um, spot on connection. And I'm so glad that I actually decided to do that little series and to kind of take a look at some of the decks that maybe I had just overlooked over the last, you know, 20 years, just because I had never brought them into my collection. And the Morgan Greer is definitely a favorite now. So while it's one of the newer decks in my collection, it has definitely become a fast favorite for 2020 and I suspect for years to come. And that is the Morgan Greer Tarot. So while I worked with a ton of wonderful tarot decks this year, these new or new to me decks were some of my favorites for 2020. I'd love to hear what new decks made an impression on you this year. So please feel free to share with me in the comments below. Thank you for joining me today. You will find links for the decks featured here in the description box below. I hope you enjoyed this video and will join me again soon for more creative tarot for an inspired life.